Uh, and obviously the Miami Dolphins are facing their old coach, Adam Gase. Well, I think that I think that the Jets right the ship a little bit here against the Dolphins. The Dolphins are terrible, um, just overall terrible. Uh, the Jets, I think, for Bell could have a very good game this week. He is uh, going up against a defense that gives up the second most amount of fantasy points to running backs. Um, I think that the offense overall does well. Uh, you know, the, the Miami Dolphins uh, give up the fourth most amount of fantasy points to the quarterback, sixth most to the wide receiver. So they are going to be, you know, probably bleeding points in this one. Um, so I can see a, a very good game for both Robbie Anderson and Jamison Crowder. I tend to lead more towards Jamison Crowder in this game just because he seems to have a better rapport with Darnold. He runs more from the slot, uh, runs some of those, you know, safer options in terms of in terms of uh, routes. So uh, I think that the Jets keep, it, uh, keep the Dolphins winless. Um, I think that the... You know, the Jets' defense hasn't been great. They give up a lot of points to the uh, fantasy points to the wide receiver position. But, you know, overall, I think that uh, I think that the Jets win this one. Uh, let's say, uh, let's go 24-14. Yeah, I, I actually think the Jets will probably win it 28-7. to Miami Dolphins are that bad. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them make a quarterback change in the middle of the year. And again, nobody knows what the Dolphins are doing anyways. The only thing yeah, is, especially since they just acquired Akeem Tlaib, who was really at the end of his career. Oh, that was a salary dump. He won't see the field yeah. for a while. But they're stockpiling those draft choices. Now, an interesting game on the West Coast. The Detroit Lions and Matthew Stafford taking on the Oakland Raiders and Derek Carr and – once we talk about the matchup, give me your idea how well Josh Jacobs is going to do out there. Uh, well, I think you know, just starting with starting with the Lions, Stafford, you know, should be in for a good game. Really, this should be a great passing game for the Lions. Um, the The Raiders do pretty good stopping up the run. Um, you know, they're a little better than middle of the road in terms of giving up fantasy points to running backs. Plus. I'm not all that much, after seeing last week, I'm not that much of a believer in Ty Johnson and J.D. McKissick. McKissick has never really been much of a fantasy contributor. He's had a couple games here and there when he was with the San, or when he was with the Seattle Seahawks the first few years of his career. But, you know, the Raiders give up the second most amount of fantasy points to quarterbacks, third most to tight ends. So maybe Hawkinson finally really gets involved again for the first time since week one. Um, and Galladay and Jones, again, uh, the Raiders give up the fifth most to the wide receiver. So Galladay and Jones should both be in for big games. Galladay at least, um, you know, after really eating, uh, eating up the uh, the Giants defense this last week. So um, that being said, going over to the the, the Raiders, um, the Lions can't stop the run, giving up the third most amount of fantasy points to the running back, and uh, have a little bit of trouble for the most part against uh, quarterbacks as well. And they're actually, you know, a little worse than average in terms of, you know, defense against um, defense against the uh, wide receivers and tight ends as well. So the Lions' defense, for the most part, has been suffering. I think this could be another high-scoring game just because neither of these defenses does very good stopping anyone. Um, and so uh, I could see. I honestly think I see the. Uh, the Lions pulling this out because I think they have better overall weapons in general and, a, in my opinion, not much but a better quarterback than Derek Carr in uh, in having Matthew Stafford. So I think the Lions probably win this one. I'm going high. I'm going 31-28. Yeah, I was actually going to go Detroit 33-30. You're right. All right. Yeah, we're so going to go. Right along the same lines. Yeah, we are. I, I think there's definitely a lot, of, a lot of offense and not a whole lot of defense. And there are some weapons between the two. Even though uh, Antonio Brown never did anything with the uh, uh, Raiders, it doesn't mean that they haven't found any suitable offensive weapons for sure. So, And the Raiders play hard. They really do. And they're, you know, they're, let's face reality, they only have a few games left over at the Oakland Coliseum and then so she rode. So we'll, we'll stay on the uh, West Coast, shall we? The Green Bay Packers and the L.A. Chargers. you got Aaron Rodgers against Phillip Rivers for probably the last time. Yeah, so the, the Chargers have been actually pretty good against wide receivers and quarterbacks. 
but they give up, they bleed points to the running backs. So this could be another big game for Aaron Jones, uh, and you know could even provide some fantasy viability for Jamal Williams in you know twelve team twelve team leagues and larger. I see Jamal Williams as as a flex play. Aaron Jones is going to be a top five running back this week, in my opinion. Um, I, while Rodgers could struggle a little bit, I still think that he puts up quarterback one numbers. Um, Devontae Adams is apparently close to playing. Um, a notification came out a couple years ago that he ran his routes faster today at practice than he did in the last week's. Uh, no helmets for everyone. Um, and so we'll kind of, we're will kind of we still waiting on the official injury report to see you know how much he practiced and kind of what capacity. That being said, I think if, if Devontae Adams comes back, I think that adds a whole new dimension for Aaron Rodgers. And, uh, and so... Um, I think that the Packers probably win this. I haven't, still have yet to see any clarity on what's going on with the the Chargers' offense now that they have fired uh, Wisenhunt, and I haven't seen exactly who's calling plays. Um, but you know, Rivers has struggled all year. Eckler has been pretty good. Melvin Gordon is still coming back. He basically didn't, you know, he's basically used the last four weeks as his preseason. Um, and so, and the. And the, the pass offense in general has suffered, except for Hunter Henry since he came back. So I think the Packers overall win this. Their defense has played pretty well. So I think the Packers win this one probably, uh, I'd say, 24-17. Yeah, do you uh, see the Chargers running game getting, uh, getting any ground at all? Uh, maybe a little bit. Again, a lot of a lot of. For the most part, the the pack or the uh, the Chargers running game over the last couple of years has really been running it a little bit, and then them catching passes out of the backfield. Um, that's where a lot of their production, especially for Eckler, but even Melvin Gordon, um, you know, last last season when he was having that great year before he went out, uh, you know, the last few weeks, his a lot of his production was his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield and taking uh, swing passes and and screen passes for touchdowns. So, Yeah, I see the Packers winning 28-17. All right. All right. We may have a potential Super Bowl preview here. We're going to talk about the Minnesota Vikings and the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs coming off another, coming off a tough loss to the Packers, but they get another... NFC Norris division foe, as our buddy Chris Berman would say. What's your take on the Vikings and the Chiefs? Well, the the Chiefs bleed a lot of points on their defense um, because this team was built to be to outscore everyone. This team was, that's what this team was built to do with with um, Patrick Mahomes. The defense has made some changes, um, but really hasn't helped. Uh, I know that. Uh, you know they they went and got uh, Houston and Clark to help with the pass rush. Hasn't really done much. Clark has been more of a run stopper than a sack artist, um, and so because of that, uh, I think Clark has also been in, was injured last week. May still be out this week. So I think the Chiefs will have a hard time really doing much against the Vikings. It is going to be at home, but I can see um, more having some success again. Hill. Hardman and Watkins are going to be their top three wide receivers for this week. Um, the Vikings have struggled a little bit, giving up the 13th most fantasy points to the wide receiver position. And as long as the offensive line can protect Matt Moore, I think that he can get the ball out and up to those uh, wide receivers to to make things interesting. Um, but the Vikings, I, Kirk Cousins going up against the defense and the Chiefs that's given up the 10th most amount of fantasy points to the quarterback position and the 4th most to running backs. So uh, Dalvin Cook is in for another big game. Um, you know, In a 16-team league, I could see Alexander Madison also having a little bit of flex appeal. Again, in the really, really big, deep leagues. Um, otherwise, he, he's really not usable. And really, um, we're still waiting to see how things are going with Thielen. I believe that he is questionable for this week. But Diggs should be in for a decent uh, a decent week against the Chiefs, also. So for me, I'm going Vi- I'm going Vikings, um, probably twenty one seventeen. Believe it or not, I think the Vikings are going to walk in the Arrowhead and whip the Chiefs thirty seven to twenty. All right. And the reason why I just I'm not sold on the Chiefs defense. I'm just not. And I and you 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 made my point for me. I think that the Vikings are a team that they. 
they're definitely one of the most dangerous teams uh, in all of football. You know they're going to get in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, with uh, Cousins hitting his stride, Dalvin Cook playing well, and a, and a couple of their receivers on track, I, the Kansas City Chiefs, Chiefs defense, I don't care who you have as your defensive coordinator, they, they just don't get it done. You know, they yeah. bar- remember they barely uh, beat the Lions, and Green Bay yeah. walked in Arrowhead and won. So, I don't know. I like the Vikings big, 37-20. All right. Okay, well, let's talk about the two expansion brothers, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Seattle Seahawks. No, Steve Spurrier is not coming back. No, Jim Zorn isn't coming back. We have a matchup between Russell Wilson and Jameis Winston. So, what are your, what's your take on uh, these two expansion brothers uh, facing off this weekend? Well, the the Buccaneers, um, starting with them, Jameis Winston, the, this, the Seahawks have struggled a little bit against quarterbacks, especially this last week. Uh, again, to put it in context last week, they were up 20 to nothing at halftime and really basically played prevent defense and just did enough to, to make sure they got the win last week going into Atlanta giving up 460 passing yards in that shop. Um, they do struggle in covering tight ends, so that means that um, Howard most likely is missing this game, so Cameron Brait is a streamable option for the offense. Evans and Godwin are just plain dangerous. Um, it kind of depends on what guy is going to be the one actually getting the work, um, because Winston has a tendency to just look at one guy um you know you look at evan's two really big games godwin did almost nothing in both of them for the most part in the rest of the games godwin has had huge games and evans hasn't done much in those games so it all is going to depend on who winston is looking at and how well the the uh seahawks defense can get a pass rush on winston uh the seahawks their defense has played well enough that they can get turnovers and Winston, you know, no one's better. You know, very few people are better at giving up the ball than Winston, especially via um, interception. That being said, you look at the Buccaneers defense and, you know, the Seahawks should be in for a great game. Carson could struggle. Again, the Buccaneers have done a very good job stopping the run game up the middle. Um, you know, I think they're the third best team in terms of giving up fantasy points to the running back position. Uh, but they're against quarterbacks. They give up the eighth most, give up the seventh most to wide receivers, the second most to, to tight ends. So, you know, Jacob Hollister could be an okay uh, streaming option for tight end. If you're in a you know 14 to 16 team league, I have him starting in a 16 team league at tight end. Um, I think that this could be a big game for, for DK Metcalf. You know, he had a decent game last week with the two touchdowns, but that was off of three catches for like 15 yards. Um, Lockett could be in for a huge game as well. So I think this could be, again, this could be another high, possibly high-scoring game that I'm hoping and should, should be the case that the Seahawks come out on top. Um, I could see this one being, you know, 35-31 Seahawks. I actually have Seattle uh, winning this one, twenty-eight to twenty-three. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, it is. I don't know why. Maybe twenty-nine, twenty-three. Uh, some sort of a two-point conversion, an odd play. But you know, there's still a lot of points. Depends on. But I think the thing that really made makes it interesting is the fact that Jameis Winston doesn't have the ability to check down his receivers like a lot of good quarterbacks should at this stage of development. He, yeah. he, he's usually, uh, what are they calling it? He's just staring down his receivers. You can't do that to survive in this league. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk about the one pick em game of the week. That's the Indianapolis Colts against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Who would have thought that the Indianapolis Colts, despite the abrupt retirement of Andrew Luck, would be 5-2 and two with Kobe Brissett at the helm? But, that, but to me, I think Frank Reich would be a candidate for Coach of the Year and got, got to hand it to those uh, Colts. Yeah, the Colts. The Colts are you know go, the Colts are going into Pittsburgh. Um, the, the the Steelers have been pretty good against uh, running backs and quarterbacks. Um, you know, bottom ten in terms of the amount of fantasy points given up. The they struggled against um, they struggled against tight ends. So knowing Brissett and his ability to to dump the ball off to Ebron and Doyle, 
um, you know, could provide both of them with a little bit of fantasy appeal. T.Y. Hilton still remains the only fantasy option at wide 